friends. Um, so I tried my best to do a studio style setup. I have on some nice relaxing music. I burnt some sweet grass and I am going to make some elderberry syrup. Uh, it's really simple. It's just, I don't want you guys to sit there and watch while we wait for water to boil. So I'm going to go down the list of things that I'm putting into my elderberry syrup. Um, first and foremost, of course, elderberries. And I'm using dried elderberries because, um, you know, elderberries are not in season. I would absolutely go out and harvest some of my own. Of course, don't eat any berries and don't use any berries that you aren't absolutely positive of the identification. I'm using about half a cup in this big pan. I think I have about three quarts of water. Um, you know, herbalism is, al as always, a very exact science, so make sure you measure everything. <laughs> like when you're making tinctures, for instance, you have to be a little bit more precise, and capsules as well. So I just, um, you know, I've got filtered water, and then I've added my half a cup of elderberries. Um, the next ingredient I'm going to add is rose hips. Rose hips are delicious. They're also extremely high in vitamin C and they're very antioxidant, so they help your body fight damage. Um, these rose hips I bought, you can process them yourself, which I occasionally do, but it is very tedious. So um, they do grow wild all over Colorado, all over different states. Actually, a lot of the United States has wild roses and almost Almost all rose bushes have rose hips in the Next fall. Next ingredient is astragalus root. And astragalus root is what is called an immunomodulating herb. So an immunomodulator does exactly what it sounds like. It modulates your immune system. If you have issues with autoimmunity, astragalus is one of those herbs that will help reduce your immune response so that your your body doesn't attack itself. Um, if you have a weakened immune system, astragalus will raise your immunity to a level that is healthy. So if it's too high or too low, it turns it up or turns it down according to what is needed. It's pretty magical that it does that. These are cardamom pods. I actually add them for the flavor even though they do have a lot of beautiful medicinal purposes. My reasoning for adding them is I like the way they taste. Um, they they do have a bit of a camphorous smell to them, so they help a lot with like clearing congestion and sinuses and um, it's personal preference. Um, you feel free to like add and subtract things from this recipe too. If there's something in here that you like, use it. If there's something in here you don't like, don't use it. Or if you have, you know, sensitivities to certain things. Um, like some people can't, I know I, uh, one of my herbalism teachers was allergic to cloves and cinnamon. So, you know, of course I wouldn't be using cinnamon in that, uh, in a recipe that I was expecting him to eat. But speaking of cinnamon, I have an organic cinnamon stick here. I'm just going to break it. They're really hard to break and just toss it in there. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to add for now is a mixture of chaga and turkey tail mushroom powder. Now turkey tail is an extremely potent immune booster um, and chaga is really high in antioxidants. So the combination of the two is really lovely together. Um, they help regulate your immune system while also improving your ability to recover from illness. They're great for your brain. There's been some incredible studies on mycomedicinals done. I highly recommend doing some research if you're interested. This is just organic turkey tail, organic chaga powder that I got at Sprouts, actually. So I am just going to give it a whisk. And that is the start of our elderberry syrup. So after this starts to simmer, um, I'm going to stir it occasionally. Well, I'll let it get up to a boil and then I'll turn it down to a simmer. I'll let, um, sorry, I'll let it boil, turn it down to a simmer, and then I'll stir it occasionally. I'm all right. <laughs> 
And then um, I'm going to let this simmer for probably around 30 or 40 minutes. I like a really strong batch of elderberry syrup. So um, especially because I'm using that astragalus root, it actually needs to simmer for about 20 minutes to release its potency into the solution. So now I'm just gonna put a lid on it and I will check on it periodically um, until it starts to boil. I did put in cold water, so it'll take a little while. And I will continue this tutorial after um, after it's been simmering for about 40 minutes. So I will see you guys back here then. All right. Hello again, friends. Um, so I'm still working on this elderberry syrup. Here in this bowl, I have the liquid. I'm gonna put it back on the heat now. So um, I'm gonna say this is about six quarts of liquid. I don't know, it seems like a lot, but here we go. So I'm gonna make a huge mess while I pour this back into the pot and add heat. So it's still pretty hot from before, but we're gonna as you can see, there's some, some sediment in, in the bowl, and that's okay. That's that mushroom powder that we added. We want to keep that in there because of its medicinal benefits. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on. And, and then I am going to add honey to sweeten. So you can make syrups with honey or sugar. I prefer honey. It's a lot healthier for you. Sugar doesn't really have any of the medicinal benefits that honey does. And I just think honey tastes better, personally. Again, personal preference. If you don't have honey, use sugar. You can even just drink the, the liquid how it is. Um, that would be considered a decoction, not a syrup, because it hasn't been sweetened. A lot of people have the misconception that syrup has to be thick in order to be considered syrup, uh, when truthfully, it does not. Syrup is any, basically any sweetened liquid that has been even slightly thickened could be considered a syrup. So, some people like it runny, some people like it thick. I like it kind of in the middle. Um, so this is heating up. I'm going to add honey. Um, this is 16 ounces, which is a pound of honey. I'm gonna add about half a pound of honey to this. And exact measurements, of course, every time. So make sure you measure that out precisely. Whatever you do, add it in a precise ratio. Um, so as you can see, I might have used a little bit more than half a bottle, and that's okay. It's, it's whatever tastes good. If it's not sweet enough, I'll add more. If it's too sweet, you can always dilute it with water. Now I'm going to leave this uncovered. I'm going to stir it until I feel that all the honey has been dissolved. And then I'm going to let it simmer, like a high simmer, for about 45 minutes. Um, the goal is to reduce this liquid by half of its volume. So as you can see, it's, it's about half an inch below that little um, bolt holding on the handle of the pot. We want it to go down by about two inches, so we're gonna leave it uncovered so that the water can evaporate off. What this does is it thickens the liquid, but it also concentrates the active ingredients so that you're not just drinking sweet water. Um, again, drinking this plain like a cup of tea is fine too. It's just not considered a syrup, and I'm showing you how to make a syrup now. So I will come back after this has reduced by half. here is I have allowed my syrup to reduce and it looks like there's a lot less in the pan than there actually was. Um, I forgot to record and started bottling it. And so something I want you to know about the bottling process is that if you're making this for yourself and you're just going to keep it at home, keeping it in the fridge is fine. If you are planning to sell this or give it to somebody over a long distance or somebody that doesn't have access to a refrigerator, 
Um, I like to add a little bit of brandy, about one tablespoon per four ounces as a preservative, um, and that will increase your shelf life exponentially. Um, and it also gives it kind of a nice little uh, flavor. It's not enough to make it alcoholic. Um, I know for some people it's against their religion to drink alcohol, and so when I do sell at markets, I make sure that I put it on the label. Um, and I will show you guys my labels when I'm when I'm done. I actually just made some new ones today. But basically all I'm doing is I have my my four ounce bottles and I've already put the brandy in here. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a tablespoon of brandy in the bottom of this bottle. And then I just use a ladle uh, to fill the bottle with elderberry syrup. Now you do not want to fill it all the way to the top, especially if you are shipping. You want to wait until this has cooled some so that it's not going to burn you or you know break your bottles. It's hard to break these bottles, but it's better to be careful. So, you know, I just fill the bottle to kind of where the bottle starts to curve and call it good. And then on to the next. Um, and that's pretty much our elderberry syrup. And then as far as dosage is concerned, for adults, I recommend one tablespoon twice a day when you're healthy. Um, when you're not healthy, I recommend increasing that dose to three tablespoons a day, nothing too crazy. And for kids as a tonic, which means as an everyday preventative or prophylactic measure, one tablespoon is okay for kids over four, a teaspoon is okay for like toddler aged kids. And then I would not give this to um, a child under the age of one because it does have honey. Um, and you definitely want to avoid honey at all costs until your baby's at least one because there's a risk of botulism spores being in the honey that we're mostly immune to, but babies are not, so be careful with that. I'll make a video for you guys. We make little gummy bears out of the rest of this, and um, yeah, I'll show you guys how that's done too. I do use beef gelatin. You can make a vegan alternative. You know, I have gar gum and I have used xanthium gum, um, but I just, I really like the gummy nature of gelatin, and I'm not a vegan, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me, but you know, there's options and nothing is set in stone. You can change this recipe. You can put it in a pint jar. It does not have to be these pretty little jars that I paid for. You know, it can just be a mason jar, um, which is how I usually store it for myself and my family. Although these bottles are kind of nice for pouring things out of, but um, yeah, that's pretty much elderberry syrup. I might do another video with just the medicinal benefits of the herbs that are in this recipe. If anybody's interested, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just keep showing you guys what I what I do. Here they are. Um, this is my Crow Boutique Organic Elderberry Syrup label. It's got the dosage for adults and children. It's got all of the ingredients, and then it's got my Etsy shop. Um, I'm hoping to get that up and running here soon. I have the shop. It has been named. I have no inventory listed as of yet. Um, I struggle with some health issues, so it's just taking me a little while to get around to it, but there's the labels. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial, and I look forward to sharing more of my knowledge with you in future videos. Uh, love and light, you guys. Wash your hands and be kind to each other, okay? Mm -hmm.